morning. Recently, I've been involved in the closing of Rikers Island and also bail reform because I see the need. This year, one young man, well, not so young, uh, he was probably about 62, claimed his own life. He had a seizure in jail, didn't belong in jail to begin with. The man was an addict. What kind? I don't really know. I just know that there was no help for him and he died in Rikers Island. Rikers Island is not unusual across the American jail spectrum. It's so easy to become a number and totally lost in the system. Our jails are a thriving business for many and they cause tremendous suffering to the communities at large. In New Mexico, 21 kids were totally forgotten, forgotten by the system that they even existed. Their families didn't forget them, but the system lost track of them. They were in jail from the age of 15, 17 years of age, and now they're in their 40s, 50s, and they're still in jail. And the gangs that they may have associated with, they're gone. But what's not gone are their families. And they should be reunited with them immediately, if not sooner. And what are we doing in New York City? We're planning on building more jails, of course, because how do you get rid of the pro prison population in one area of the city? Oh, you put it maybe in Chinatown or some other community that doesn't want them or need them. This is a travesty for us. At any one time between the jail population and the federal population, we could have anywhere from 12 to 16 million folks behind bars. And they don't get a get out of jail free card either. And they should. So many of them do not belong in the jail system to begin with. Why are they there? They're there simply because of the color of their skin and because they may have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. And because they can't afford any bail, not when you're poor, you give somebody $25,000 bail, they got to pay a lot of money in order to secure that bail and get out of jail. And they can't. And so they're languishing. When I gave testimony before the city council on the closing of Rikers Island, I asked, what was the population of Rikers Island? What did it compose of? And I found that out of the 6,000 folks in Rikers, at least 2,200 of them have mental disturbances of some kind. They certainly don't belong in jail. Do we have social services to help them? No. Do we have social services on a police hotline that can direct people to the appropriate agencies and housing? No. We tend to send them to Rikers where they can languish with people who have not been arraigned and also adjudicated on a crime. They have no idea in Rikers who committed what crime and what is the extent of the crime. Is it a felony, a misdemeanor? Why are they there? Nobody knows. But you can know in a nanosecond. Law firms can go through data in hours. These are 6,000 lives 
Surely when there's an intake on them, we should know who they are, where they lived, what kind of medical problems they've got, what crime are they accused of at the very least, and maybe we can have an administrative judge immediately look at their case and decide, do they really have to be in jail? Can't anyone think about the problems that this has made? Instead, Mayor Adams is going to hire more police and more corrections officers. And I was told by the head of the Department of Corrections they didn't think that Rikers would close in 2007 because they expected the population at Rikers to rise to 7,000 folks. And after reading the local papers, I now see that contracting is going on in Rikers through 2029. So who's closing Rikers? Who's providing the community services that we all want and need. You care about public safety, then it seems to me you gotta return people who are not violent to their homes where they can wait for some administrative judge to determine their fate. Not everyone needs jail for sure. We already know that. What we'd like to see is Policemen on the beat, getting to know the communities, getting kids off the streets, providing more services in the community for kids, whether it's apprenticeships, whether it's sports, whether it's competition in sports. Lord knows globally, when kids are idle, they get into mischief. The objective is, don't let our kids be idle. And then they won't go into gangs. And that is a solution in itself. I had my kids, my grandchildren. I used to go from one soccer game to another. I went to one robotics competition after another. I went to violin concerts and choral concerts and plays. The kids were busy. That's what has to happen with young people. Their brains are still forming. They can still change after the age of 28. Why put young people or malleable kids, even in their 20s, in a jail for adults and throw away the key. They got COVID there in jail. They don't have proper health care or that man who died from an overdose seizure and withdrawal probably. He didn't have to die. 20 folks died last year in Rikers. That's a crime. I'm still waiting to speak with my councilwoman to see her position on bail reform and closing Rikers. I already know what I think is just and fair. It should be closed and folks should be getting the services they deserve. And the right to a speedy trial is one of our rights. And we've taken that away from people who are in Rikers or other jails. Another right we've taken away, and they haven't even been convicted of a crime, is they can't vote. So you got all these folks languishing in jail. They can't vote. They've lost their right to a speedy trial. They're not getting proper health care. What are we doing? All you have to do is look at West Germany and you'll know that there are better ways to handle felons or folks who we think have actually committed a crime. Not someone that you believe has committed the crime and you're just warehousing the poor kid. 
I remember seeing the documentary 13, where the police officers themselves said there was a quota. It's good for the police force. Well, it's not good for people and communities. You want something that's good for all of us, for all the people. Figure out a way to have an integrative police force somebody who can field the telephone calls for domestic abuse, for violent crime, for petty thief, for addiction, and get them to the right agency for help. Don't just warehouse them in a jail. And certainly, I don't think we need another jail in Chinatown or anywhere else until we understand what is it we want to do in this society? What kind of a mark do we want to make on our kids? And do we want our kids to make it on our society? If we want public safety and we want the public good, then education is key. After school, projects of some sort are important. Apprenticeships are important. Give the kids a chance to grow up as kids and don't put them into jail for almost no reason at all. Everyone can be saved. Let's save our kids and let's do it smartly with a police force that is responsive to the needs of the community. No more of this catch and keep business. No, we're not the enemy. Our kids aren't the enemy. It doesn't matter the color of their skin or their beliefs. Kids are kids. And as we know, it could be 5,000 years from when we all came here, or 50,000, man is the same. We have the same emotions and feelings. Nothing changes when it comes to us and our feelings and emotions, but how we think, that can change. And how we learn, that can change. And saving one life is really important.